This video is proudly sponsored by Newtype. Tools, accessories, model kits, these guys have it. Hop over to NewtypeHQ.com and use the link below to help this channel out for future builds. Thirty-five years. Not only that this game is just as old as I am, but it has literally stood up through the test of time to how much it has been beloved by multiple fans. Spanning multiple game consoles, dozens of fan films, tons of fan artwork, and the ever so popular merchandise by the ever so popular Nintendo, Santa's Rand has never had its own model kit, yet alone its own kit bash. But what if? We can take existing Gundam model kits, mash them all together, and turn it into something that can be truly marveled by all. Yo, welcome back, my dudes and dudes. Another E, wait a second, I get to change things up a bit. Not only is this going to be an exciting build from the good folks from Bendai, this is going to be my very, very first attempt of doing a kit bash. Now, you're probably asking yourself, what exactly is a kit bash? Essentially, it's taking existing model kits that are in the marketplace and then combine it into one unique design, whether it's grounded into your own original OC or it's something that's rooted into pop culture. This time around, we're going to be focusing on my all-time game franchise, Metroid. And my first time experiencing playing that game wasn't with the Super NES. At that time, it was starting to grow into the new next-gen consoles, which are like the PlayStation 2, Xbox, and GameCube. But all that changed on November 2002 when I was introduced to Metroid Prime, and I was immediately hooked. I wasn't really comfortable with first-person shooters or wasn't well-versed in the Metrovania art style of games, but I was immediately captivated with its unique world, awesome soundtrack, and the ever-so-popular design of Samus Aran. So, since this year marks the 35th anniversary for Metroid, I want to do something special to my all-time favorite bounty hunter, Samus Aran. And to do this, we're going to be needing five mold suits. Everything from the Gundam Aegis Titus, Justice Freedom Gundam, the Rizzle, the new Master Great Testament Gundam, and to wrap things up, a nice little bow, Double O Quanta. Now, this is probably the most ambitious project that I've ever done and most definitely the most expensive one, but to make this work, we're going to need these unique mobile suits. So we're going to start things off with Justice Gundam and Double O Quanta. So what exactly are we going to need from Justice Gundam? Primarily, we're going to be needing the feet. And then as for the leg structures, we're going to be working with Double O Quanta. I want to go with an art style where the power suit looks relatively like a prototype while at the same time retains some kind of like Hideo Kojima like art direction while kind of refine it like just like a mech suit and make it look like it's something from the world from Pacific rim. Sounds weird, but that's the kind of concept that I want to go with. Now for the other runners, this is where it gets kind of interesting. For the head mount, we're going to be using the Rezzle. The Rezzle has that nice slim V shape around the mouth, while at the same time retaining that nice Samus Aran visor look to it. So that's going to actually work very good, and that's pretty much the only piece I'm going to need for this model kit, and maybe a handful of pieces from the bazooka. Now for the main torso, we're going to be using the Testament's torso as well as parts from the head and the main waist section, and maybe a handful of runners here in there to mix things up you know i'm kind of approaching this like if you're building a set of legos and that's how i'm really going to enjoy this so i have all the model kits that i need to make this kit a reality but the big question i know you're asking yourself how are you going to pull off the iconic round shoulders for a samus ran i mean they're pretty much our iconic look right fortunately enough there is actually a model kit in the marketplace that can actually pull that off and that my dudes and do that is going to be the gundam 8 titus now i took the liberty of buying a high grade just to get a good feel to see if the art direction can work with it while at the same time making sure that the shoulder consistency is just the way i wanted unfortunately the high grade did not fulfill those needs but it gave me such a wonderful glimpse on what i can expect if i bought a master grade the down side is the master grade is extremely difficult to buy right now and the only place you can get it is in japan and the asking price for those particular parts is around 200 dollars so it is a very expensive and very ambitious project but we're going to see it through but if there's one thing i need to address there are three three crucial rules i need to address when building this project so first thing off the bat is going to be no 3d printed pieces look i get it this is probably going to trigger a lot of people but me personally i want to work with the existing runners that come with each individual model kit essentially working with a 3d printer it's kind of cheating at the same time it wouldn't be challenging to work what i need to work with to make it as authentic as i want 
Number two, and that is going to be dynamic poses. Now, I get it, working with modified model kits can prove to be a bit difficult when it comes to putting these guys in dynamic poses, and a lot of times in the Gundam community, they are usually stuck in static poses. Me, personally, I wanna to try to get it in at least two or three poses. And last and finally, number three, modifications. I'm gonna be working with a wide span of LED lights from Evans Designs, while at the same time implementing a nice, unique system of springs that you can buy separately for Gundam model kits. It can prove to be a bit challenging, but the one thing I wanna do with this model kit is make it look as accurate as Samus ran in the video games. So as always, before I get started building this model kit, I need to take a step back and evaluate once again which runners I'm going to be using for this unique build. So like I mentioned earlier on in the video, I'm going to be rocking out with Justice Gundam's feet. And as for the leg structure, I'm going to be sticking it out with Double O Quanta. Now I know there's a handful of you dudes into that's asking yourself, you know, talk about her, why did you just stick with Double O Quanta's feet? You know, it's pretty adequate to the actual art direction for Samus Aran, right? You're absolutely right, but at the same time, not right. <laughs> and here's the reason why. It doesn't have that nice like ankle gait on, in front of the foot, like that nice little shoe tongue. I, I don't remember the name of it, forgive me, but you guys know what I'm talking about. It lacks that like that extra little flare detail, and I want to really emphasize that with Justice Gundam's feet. Not only it looks really cool, but at the same time, it gives it a nice like um, heart separation. You know, and at the same time, I'm still going to get a great range of poses around the ankle section, which you can see here. And at the same time, I still want to retain that art direction. Now, the biggest question is going to be the V section for the waist. As you can see here, Quantas does look accurate to what I want to do, but these little tabs around the corner are just looking kind of little funny looking. So, what I'm going to basically do is going to be using these little reference points in back of it and then use an exacto blade to cut right through it. I would use an, like a power tool to cut that out, but you're going to get inconsistencies of burnt plastic. I would use a saw, but at the same time, you'll be stuck with jagged edges and you got to spend a lot of time sanding those areas down. So it's going to be using an exacto blade to cover these areas out. So this next part might seem a little weird, but try to hear me out with this. What I'm basically doing is creating a nice, soft, foggy look to it. Sure, I can apply like a flat coat to get that same kind of consistency, but I feel that sanding down these clear parts just at the right kind of sand and grit to get a nice foggy look will not only create a great spectrum of light diffusion, but at the same time give a nice light balance when you're shining a bright green LED light through these clear pieces. Once I get the consistency just right, I'm going to then be polishing it down to make sure the surface is nice and smooth. Next challenging part is going to be creating a housing unit for the LED light unit. Since the plastic already has like a very slight deformed divot in there, that's going to be an excellent reference point to drill a hole right through there to place an LED light in there. So I'm going to be using a reference point just below that section to actually have a nice little spot to funnel in the electrical wiring through. And then once I got it the way I want it, then I'll be drilling a bigger hole into that main area. So, not all the runners are now nicely cut and sanded down, it's now to take the next step to our next mating voyage and that is doing custom painting. This process can take roughly a day or two if you do it correctly, but me personally, I am not going to rush it, I'm just going to enjoy every step of the way to have fun. You need it. 
Alright, now we have finally approached the one part of this model kit that I'm actually super excited and that is actually building that hand cannon from scratch. Now there are some problems that I did come across when building this guy. First and foremost, I wanted to put an LED light inside the main wrist section for Samus Aran's power suit. The problem is the electrical wire is so thin it will break. And that got me thinking, is it possible to put electrical wire inside the hand cannon? And unfortunately, that is a big no. The, the amount of constraints that you're working with something this small and this tightly packed will cause nothing but issues when it comes to posing the arm cannon. For example, the actual arm section is on like a swivel mechanic where it goes up and down. Any kind of deviation of cutting into the plastic and just disturbing that actual like hollow out groove section will not only snap the plastic, not only it will damage the plastic, but in the long term it will end up breaking the LED wiring. So. It is a good idea to work with. If the space was a little bit more bigger, I probably wouldn't have these issues, but I'm gonna work what I need to work with to make this guy look the way I want. It.
Just as I promised, here's an excellent example why this is not possible to put LED lights inside the hand cannon. Number one, to make this guy look the way I wanted, I would need at least three LED lights to work with. And since these plastic pieces are so tightly packed against one another, it just wouldn't work. Maybe working with one LED wire would be just fine, but working with three would make it so thick to the point where it will actually do even more harm and damage to it. If this model kit or this custom kit bash was just done in aesthetic poses, the issue probably wouldn't be a problem. Since I'm trying to do dynamic poses as many as I can, I have to work with the restrictions that have been presented to me. It's just one of those things that happens. So, just a friendly heads up as this video is progressing, you're going to start to notice that there's some inconsistencies with the video. So, a good example is what happened last week. When I was expecting the last runners to arrive in the mail, I end up getting this. It turns out that the eBay seller had no idea what they were selling and they end up sending me the wrong item. So, let this be a rule for you dudes and did it. If you're going to buy something on eBay, double check, triple check, quadruple check before you hit that buy button because these things happen. So in the meantime, we're going to be focusing a lot of our attention on the main head section and the torso. 
Just like what I mentioned earlier on the video, we're going to be focusing on the Rezl's face section, pretty much the main mouth and the main visor, so that way it can retain that nice Samus look. Now for the head, torso, waist section, and at the same time the hips, we're going to be rocking it out with the Testament. Since this kit is relatively new and it actually retains the actual arc direction that I want to pull off with this build, which makes this such an excellent candidate for this unique build. But probably the downside is going to be the backpack unit. I do have a handful of runners that I can try to make it as look the way how it is for the actual figurine, but I'll try to work what I can to make it look as cool as possible. Now, as you can see here, I'm sifting through the pieces of the Rizzle to see if I can find the visor. There it is. I'm using my nice little sandpaper technique on that and then cut out the actual mouth section for the actual Samus's head. Now, this is going to be the wonderful thing I love about the Testament. The measurements for the head are just tight enough where the actual visor and the mouth section from the Rezl can actually sneak into that cavity space in the head. The configurations are almost perfect and that just makes it so much more better the way how it's going to look. The definite the big challenge for this particular head is going to be the V-fin. I'm going to be trimming off the horns because they are kind of in the way, but I want to nice keep that nice retained look to it. But most importantly, the biggest challenge is going to be creating that nice little um, air piping system around Samus's mouth and the helmet. I guess that's like her, um, her breathing apparatus, you can say. The challenge with that is I'm not going to be using existing runners, but there's actually like these little springs you can purchase from hobby stores. So that's still going to create that nice little look the way how I want it, so while at the same time retaining a nice Samus Aran look. So I'm going to cut these nubs off and then proceed on cutting the rest of the runners out. Here it is. These are the springs that I was telling you about that I actually accidentally ran into these when I was at my local hobby store. They are small enough. They have just enough flexibility where I can actually pull off that nice iconic look for Samus's helmet. Now comes the most challenging part is how I'm going to install it. I'm going to be drilling a nice little hole right between the main part of the mouth and then interconnect it to the back. But the biggest issue I'm going to have with this model kit is interconnecting the waist section to the main torso. So what exactly am I talking about? My original intention was to use the waist section from Quanta and then connect it to the Testament. But since the Testament already has a ball joint connection to its own waist unit, it makes sense to work with that one instead. I'm gonna have to do a great deal of modifications to get the way how I want it and then work with that. Now comes the main chest area. I've already gained things ready to put two little holes into the main chest area so that way I can sneak in an LED light through and through. But since there's gonna be just enough cavity space underneath that undergarment, I'm gonna actually be able to reflect a light from the under part of the red piece and down underneath the bottom part of the torso. It sounds confusing at first, but I'm gonna get like a nice light refracting on two different pieces accidentally. I've done this before in other projects and it works absolutely beautifully. Just hold on, yeah. She's an original, original, original. 
So this is one part I left out in the build, so I wanted to do my best to try to explain where did this little thruster part come from. It actually comes from a very old build that I did almost five years ago, and this was one of my very first approaches to get back into custom building model kits. And I absolutely love the Frame Arts kits, they're great, but since I'm not using this kit anymore, I felt it was a great candidate to use for kit bashing needs. And like that, my dudes and dudes, we have successfully completed our very first kit bash. And I just want to take this moment and to say thank you so much for being patient for the last three and a half weeks. It has been 
uh, a bit of a personal struggle for me to get this project done and then trying to get the parts and then trying to commit to get the project done. But you dudes and dudettes made this project a reality. All the subscribers, all the Patreons that contribute to this project, you guys made this project a reality. And I do hope that this video does well. I can do at least two or three more kit bashes before the year's over. So thank you, thank you, thank you guys so much for supporting me through these last four and a half years. And I will see you dudes and dudettes on the next build.